Bib is ready for some cosmic action in today's game, Cosmic Arc for your Atari 2600, featuring a pretty cool picture of a UFO there on the label. Really dig that. Let's go ahead and take Cosmic Art, pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Boo. Cosmic Arc was published by Imagic and carries a copyright year of 1982. It was programmed by Rob Fulop, who also programmed the Atari 2600 version of Missile Command. Interestingly enough, Cosmic Art is a sequel of sorts to Atlantis, a Missile Command style game, which I just reviewed in the last episode, as the game picks up right after the events of Atlantis. According to the manual, the Cosmic Ark and its Atlantean crew escape from the previous game and is on a Noah's Ark-like mission to save creatures from the Alpha Rho solar system, which is on the verge of losing its sun. Now it's up to you to save as many of these exotic creatures as you can. Two by two, of course. Cosmic Ark is a two-screen action game for one or two players. In the first screen, you defend the Ark from meteors that will come from the four sides of the screen. To fire at them, you simply press a joystick in one of the four directions. But you must return the joystick in the center position in between shots. If you survive the meteor shower, you will go to the nearest planet to rescue two animals. You will guide a small shuttle ship to the surface and press the button to send down a tractor beam to capture one of the creatures. If you grab one, you must hold the button down until you hear a sound that indicates that they have reached your ship. Some planets also have defense systems that will fire upon you. So are you rescuing or kidnapping these creatures? If one hits you, you lose energy, and one of the creatures you've captured on the planet gets released. A warning sound will let you know that you need to return to the mothership before a meteor hits it. At this point, you will need to fly back to the mothership and prepare to defend it from the oncoming meteor, whether you have captured both creatures or not. After this, you will return to the meteor shower screen. After passing the meteor shower screen again, you will either return to the previous planet if you failed to catch both creatures or go to a new planet if you previously caught both creatures. Your game ends when you run out of fuel. A red bar under your score in the meteor shower screen represents how much fuel you have. You begin with 40 fuel units. You gain one fuel unit for each meteor you destroy, 10 units for each creature you capture, and you completely refuel if you successfully get both creatures off the planet and return to the arc. Every time you fire at a meteor, you lose a fuel unit, and every time the arc gets hit by a meteor, you lose 10 units of fuel. Scoring wise, you get 10 points for destroying a meteor, 30 points for destroying a special wavering meteor, and 1000 points for capturing both creatures on a planet and returning to the cosmic arc. There are four single player variations of the game, including a regular and advanced game, as well as a regular and advanced version of the game that stays on the meteor shower screen. There is also a regular and advanced version of the two player game, but in this game, one player will control the meteor shower screen while the other controls the shuttle ship capturing the creatures. The position of the right difficulty switch determine who does what, with the A position having the right joystick controlling the meteor shower side and the B position reversing this. The left difficulty switch will make the arc wider in the A position, thus making it more difficult to defend than when the switch is in the B position. Graphically speaking, I thought the game looked pretty good, but where I thought the game really excelled was the exceptional sound effects. I would also consider this a family friendly game, since what could be more friendlier than kidnapping alien life forms before their son dies? At the time my research on eBay, loose copies were going for $4 to $5, complete copies were going for $10 to $18, and new copies were going for $6 to $15, including shipping. That's right, new copies were actually selling less than the complete copies. So what did I think of Cosmic Arc? I was really impressed with the game. It seems to me that Atlantis is often more well-liked than Cosmic Arc, but for me it was just the opposite. While I enjoyed Atlantis, I really liked the quick action and having two screens with separate but complementing gameplay. Honestly, you could almost have made two separate 2600 games from the two screens, so it's almost like you're getting two games in one. And as I said before, the sound effects are great. So where am I going to rate Cosmic Arc? Well, somewhere in the top third. I do like Star Raiders a little bit more at 29, but I will give it an edge over the Rare River Patrol at 30. So out of the 96 games I've ranked for the 2600, Cosmic Arc is saving the 30 position. Cosmic Arc offers two screens of fun for the 2600. So what do you think of Cosmic Arc for the 2600? Whether you agree or disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon. 
Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash gamer for more information. You can also follow me on both the Facebook or the Twitter. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care and go kidnap some alien creatures from a dying solar system.